what I've shared here can help. <laughs> I don't what I've shared here is helpful. Do I get things done at a pace that I'm happy with? No. Do I wish I could get things done faster? You bet. Is that an excuse to not get started at all? No way. This is a mindset that stopped me from getting things done for a very long time. I would be so overwhelmed by the amount of time that something would take to get done that I wouldn't start at all. And this led to a lot of things just not happening when they should have. But I did eventually realize that it was better slower than not at all. I've come up with some productivity tips, hacks, call them what you want, in order to get things done, get it done at a faster pace, but also at a pace that works for my life. Oh, and I'm hoping that maybe this will give you some ideas as well. And you know, if you have some tips of your own, feel free to share them. You can drop it in the comments. We can ha start a conversation about it. And we can share ideas to help each other get through what we need to get through better and faster. First off, when it comes to homeschooling and working from home, my first tip is that it's really all about the pacing. Um, I found that I would see people in similar industries doing things that I do and they're just killing it in terms of their, their productivity and getting things done and their scheduling. And I had to come to terms with the fact that as a homeschooler, that it's just not going to be the same thing and that my priorities are going to shift throughout the day and that I need to pace myself in a manner where I can give priority to what needs to be prioritized when it needs to be prioritized. I think I just said that three times straight. <laughs> okay, a key thing is that I know I know I had to find my personal best. And that is not gonna be the same personal best as someone who is single, someone who is married without children, someone who is working from home but their kids go to school. I have to find the personal best that suits what I'm working with and is not going to jive with everybody else. And you know, as homeschoolers, we know that there aren't too many examples to follow in this department. So we're really kind of figuring this out as we go. Although there are some really good ones. And in fact, I can uh, link to some of those below so you can get some other tips and hacks <laughs> to add to your magic hat of tricks of getting through homeschooling. I wanted to complete my tasks as quickly as those people who didn't don't have kids. And I had to just get over that mental hurdle that we are in different lanes and that I have to work with my lane and do the best that I can within that lane. But boy, oh boy, do I sometimes still wish I could work as, get my work tasks done as quickly as everyone else. So tip number two is what I found that works best for me is to make a detailed schedule. And here's why. There was a time where a detailed schedule was not what I needed. But as I found as our family grew and that my need to include work in my day grew, that the chaos also grew. And you know, the flow that I had before was great for that time, but I had to shift because the priorities were shifting. And the more detailed the schedule is, the easier the flow can actually be. Now, you know, some people are not schedulers and that's totally fine, do what you do. But I found that the more balls there are to juggle, the more they have each have a place to go, the better the day will flow. When things go off track, it's so much easier to get them back on track because you had something you were following in the first place. When I wasn't following anything, wasn't following anything and things went off track, then you were just lost. But if I know that I have A, B, and C, and C got missed, I know where I can squish that in because I can look at the rest of the week, I can look at the rest of the day, and see where I can fit things back in and adjust. It's so much simpler, I find, to adjust when everything is actually laid out in <laughs> super, super great detail, um, which is something I can talk about more in additional detail if that's something you'd like so feel free to let me know i mean we can really get down to the nuts and bolts of what the calendar could look like the next tip <laughs> that i'm offering is reduce where you can this is one that i'm really still working on and struggling with myself but i see the importance of it and i've also learned from others 
um, some great moms who offer this advice as well and the more I implement it the best the better things work reduce where you can so obviously not everything can be a priority um, and those tasks that can be farmed out and given away really need to be farmed out and given away you know it's a matter of what is important right now and what is important right now might not be me personally doing all the dishes <laughs> As much as I love to do the dishes and I can romanticize about cleaning my kitchen with a toothbrush, that's not necessarily where my focus needs to be right now. So that is something that I can give away. So I realize this is very budget dependent and um, you know, this is something that I'm learning to work with as well. But you know, for instance, if for you, it's easiest to send out your laundry so that that is not something that you are stuck on and can free up your time for work and more schooling, then that's your thing. If your thing is having somebody come once a week and do the heavy lifting in terms of the cleaning in the house, then that is something that's great to give away. You know, if you're, you know, working on YouTube and for you, editing is just a drag, you can get on Fiverr and farm that out as well. I mean, personally, I still really like doing my editing, but maybe that's something I could probably let go too. <laughs> so there's, there's something that can be let go and doing that will open up more time and headspace and just sanity. The next tip is to get hyper-focused on the most important projects. And maybe this is not for everyone, but for someone like me, who's always been a bit of a jack of all trades, and when I was single and childless, kind of just worked on everything at the same time. And it worked for me because I had as many hours in the day to dedicate to what I wanted to do. But now, <laughs> in a life of children and speak of the devil, and oh, in the life of children and homeschooling and dinners and lunches and breakfasts and everything else, <laughs> um, there are a lot less hours available. Whittling down <laughs> what the, the, the primary projects are um, that are going to accomplish your goal is really important. And my next tip I would offer up is to, and I know it might sound cliche, but enjoy the process. And I say this because I have to talk to myself as well. Um, because the time constraints are so tight, sometimes it's Do easy. Do a ponytail? Okay, can you give me like five minutes? <laughs> I know it. I know it sounds cliche, but enjoying the process is something that I have to help myself work on and focus on a lot as well. Because when the time constraints get so tight, sometimes it's just like getting to the end of something is becomes such. Um, a focus that it's easy to get tunnel vision and get kind of miserable with the things that happen every day and suddenly you realize time has gone by and you're not enjoying your days and that's probably not why you're homeschooling in the first place. Um, I know that's not why I'm homeschooling in the first place. I do want this quality time with my children and this is why I'm working <laughs> from home in order to have this quality time with my children. And so if I'm just stuck on the goal and not um, helping myself be present in the day to day at the same time, then I get really miserable because I'm just focused on getting there, getting there, getting there. And today, and today is really tough because I'm not there yet. But not being there yet is okay too. <laughs> so I think I was saying something about enjoying the process, right? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Keeping an eye on the big picture, keeping focused on the big, big picture while still being in the nitty gritty of each day, it's critical um, to just a good perspective on what needs to be done so that we can enjoy the te teaching moments and we can enjoy the moments that we're working and we can still enjoy the moments if we're still washing the dishes and need to get those done too that you know this is a part of the day to day and that's okay and not every part is the best part <laughs> and that's okay too we need to do the best to keep um keep the joy 
<laughs> through those moments. Just as a side note, sometimes you might feel like you're trying to do too many things. In my life, um, I've seen there's many times where uh, I need to take it easy and go at a slower pace. And those moments are important. Those are important seasons. Um, and then there are times where you know, you're in a season where you know you need to go and you need to grind. And one is not better than the other and one is not more necessary than the other. And it's up to each of us to determine what is necessary in a moment and what we need to get through. So right now I find myself in a place where a slower pace is not what I need. It might be what I want, but it's not what I need right now. And what I need to do is go and what I need to do is grind. So <laughs> this is probably more for us that right now that are in a season where we need to grind. If you're in a season where you need to take a slower pace and you are going at a slower pace, by all means, be there, enjoy that. Don't feel like you need to grind. When it's time to grind, it's time to grind. <laughs> to every time and to every season, right? So I just hope that um, what I've shared here can help <laughs> what I shared here is helpful to someone on their homeschooling journey and let's keep supporting each other let's keep helping each other and um kill the focus <laughs> are you not in focus come here come here you're you're, you're messing up my shot <laughs> let's keep okay. helping each other let's keep supporting each other let's be out there and let's just give each other a virtual hug and get that work done and get our kids taught until next <laughs>